Yeah, so you see them a little bit in Australia, these cotton trails. Let me start off with the word cotton trails being short for condensation trails. So um, fuel for jets is kerosene. It consists of carbon and hydrogen. When you burn the carbon, you get the carbon dioxide, which is invisible. When you burn the hydrogen, you get water vapour, which can, if the conditions are right, condense into water and then turn into ice. And so occasionally in Australia you can look up in the sky and you can see these cotton trails going across in America where the air traffic is so much greater, there's so much more of them, and the same again in Europe. And so there's a subset of people who reckon these are not just ordinary old condensation of water, but their cotton trails are actually chemtrails. The government, they say, has put drums of chemicals in every single aeroplane that flies in the world. And these chemicals come, are mixed in with the exhaust and these chemicals are then going to do various things. They're going to um, reduce the population and kill us or they're going to stop global warming, which the governments really know apparently is happening and they're going to stop it, or they're going to turn us into what they call sheeple sheep and people who will obey whatever the government tells us and then a whole bunch of other things. So these uh, chemtrail conspiracists look at a normal cotton trail and they say that it's a you know, bunch of poisons and as their proof they say they've only started appearing in the last 10 years. No, we have photographs from World War II showing that they exist uh, behind the warplanes back then and can stay in the air for hours. And so if somebody has decided to jump on this and turn it into a way of making money. So, wow. right, so y you know the whole gluten thing, yes. right? So gluten is a, gluten-free food is a $90 million industry in Canada, $4.2 billion industry in America, and it's based on the fact that eight out of every thousand people have a reaction to a protein in wheat which goes on the name gluten, and then it goes through a pathway with your immune system and it ends off ends up shearing the little microvilli, little tiny sort of like hair-like things in your mm -hmm. gut, which means you can't absorb minerals and you can't absorb vitamins A, D and K. It's a real condition. It happens to eight out of every thousand people. In Australia, 280 out of every thousand people go looking for gluten-free food. Right? <laughs> so the marketing has been really, really effective. So many gluten-free foods have been manufactured rather coldly, I thought, mm. um, to take advantage of this new worry about the gluten thing. And so the foods are actually inferior, but between two and four times the cost. But the trouble is, even with re really good marketing, you're only going to get to maybe one quarter of the population. Chemtrails fall on all of us. And so I found this website, <coughs> <laughs> wonderful website called harddawn.com, right. mm. and they're saying chemtrail-free food's the next health trend. So what you have to do is firstly convince people that chemtrails are real, yes. and then sell chemtrail-free food. So people are actually buying this? They are buying it. Um, they, they, this is a sort of an extreme group here going with the... They also say that the chemtrails, uh, let me quote here, militant atheists using chemtrails to poison the angels in heaven. Now, now, we're, now we're moving into critical thinking. Mm. The, the extra level is that on one hand they're saying that there's no such thing as global warming, but then on the other hand they're saying that global warming is one of the things that's been caused by poisoning mm. the angels. And then they go even further, that the, chem, the, the um, chemtrails are causing FAMP. You've never heard of FAMP, have you? No. F-A-M-P. Facebook associated mind parasites. <laughs> OK. Right. Do explain, right, Dr right. Carl. And it causes symptoms of um, energy depletion. Yeah, a lot of people feel tired. Anxiety. Self-aggrandising victimonology. I've never mm. done what that no, is. No, I don't know um, what that is. Critically self-organised criticality. But the point is that the cure for it is potatoes and the potato growers are really big behind this thing. So this is part of the symptom of the loss of critical thinking that we're seeing in our society. In fact, the one I got just the other day has been coming around every year since 2003 and it said, Dr Carl, what am I going to do about this? Mars on August 27 is going to be as big in the sky as the moon. And this has been coming around every year for the last 12 years. So people are just subscribing to any idea that they're seeing out there. They're just not at all... No critical know, thinking. Yeah. Uh, Mars could be as big as the moon if 
it was 140 times closer or 140 times bigger. Mm. It's not going to do either of those things. So it won't be that big. And it goes back to back in August, 2000, August 27, in 2003, when for the first time in 60,000 years, Mars was its closest. And instead of being a dot, it was a t slightly bigger dot. And that's been recycled into it'll be as big as the moon and it comes around every year and then people... It's kind of like Chinese whispers in a way yeah, where the story... Yeah, the echo chamber effect. Yes. Where if you tell me that... Um, what is it, the spiders? The uh, daddy long legs are the most uh, poisonous spider in the world but they can't kill you because their fangs are too short. Mm. That sentence is wrong in four different ways. And yet my daughter told it to me from school because another kid who was one year older than her told her and I heard her telling some other ah. kid. So it just sort of spreads around. This is when she was eight years old. Yes. So, Dr Carl, what are you going to do? What are we going to do about this? Um, it's difficult. We're in a world where in America one quarter of the population uh, do not accept that the Earth goes around the sun. Now, this has been a survey carried out by Science magazine for the last 40 years, and 8% of the population do not accept that DNA exists. So I don't know what we can do. Maybe we can teach critical thinking again, mm -hmm. or maybe we can just try and be little beacons of light in the darkness. It's hard. Well, isn't Dr Carl, you have your work cut out for you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr Marion.